So get your Bibles out. We're going to look at Philippians chapter 4 today. Philippians chapter 4. I know I've preached Philippians chapter 4 so many times in uh, my 11 years here at Word of Life, and we'll probably do it for another 1,100 years uh, because it's such a great passage of Scripture um, as we look at this. Uh, so you can be turning there, and I just want to give you some, some context. I want to give you some idea. I want to remind you. We are actually, I'm, I'm, I'm finally prepared to say it. I'm officially call it that we are in a series. I was hesitant. I didn't know what God was doing, but uh, we are in a series entitled Overcomers. Praise God, there was one that heard it. We are in a series entitled Overcomers. Amen. Amen. You know, the same word for overcomer in Scripture is the same word used in Romans where it says more than a conqueror. Somebody didn't hear that. When we are in this series, Overcomers, I'm declaring what God's already said about you when Christ came in your life. He made you a comer to an overcomer. You came to him and he created in you an overcoming life. That's good news. Excuse me, just a second. Hallelujah! Okay, I'm good. Amen. If you're visiting for the first time, this is how it goes sometimes. <laughs> Welcome to Word of Life Family Church. God bless you. God bless you watching online. Hallelujah. This series really came out of, well, I don't know if anyone's noticed, but 2020 has been a little different. I, I don't know if I needed to point that out if you guys were feeling like, oh, I didn't notice anything. Um, but if you have, we're going to pray for you because, never mind. Anyway, so this series really came out of this thing, and we're at the end of 2020, but we are still fighting in where we are. Is it just me, or does anyone else feel like we're still kind of fighting this thing? And, and so as we look at this, this is really how this came about. This is really where this came from. And for me, and some of you know, just a few weeks ago, uh, I was fighting. Uh, I, I got sick, and I was fighting that thing. And it's a crazy kind of thing, what your mind does when, when you're affected in that way. And I really had to do something like I've never done before. I, I've always loved God. I've always sought God. But I had to get into his word, and I didn't know if it was making sense because my mind was foggy. I was so exhausted. But I began to dig. I knew he was the only source, the only way that I was going to bring life back in my, in my body. Amen. I knew it was, it was only him. And it's in that that this series really developed. And uh, some of you who watched, this is our third Sunday in this. Uh, two of the, two, the first two parts were done con completely online. And I'll be honest with you, that was one of the most difficult times for me. One, I didn't get to see everybody. Two, uh, I was not feeling well at all. And three, is really hard when your mind is muddy to make any sense of anything. And I was working hard to, 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 to give you anything. Now, I apologize if the fr first two parts of this series made no sense um, because I wasn't sure I was making any sense. But it was a declaration. It was a, a stand to say, no, no, devil, you're not the one that's victorious. I am in Christ. Amen. Jesus is the one that makes me free. And if, even if my body says no, my mouth, my praise, my heart says yes. Amen. And that's what this is about. And this is really the heart of this. And I don't know, maybe you didn't deal with a sickness, or, but maybe it's a job that's really ugh, getting you, and it's like wearing you down. Maybe it's your bank account. Maybe it's a relationship. Maybe I think all of us understand that weight, that heaviness, that pushing down and that where we begin to feel, I, don't, I won't declare it depression, but it feels hard, you feel hard pressed and pushed down and it's like you can, you, the light of the end of the tunnel be, be, seems to be very, very dim. Anyone ever experienced anything like that or am I the only one? It's like, yeah, we got some hanky flaring over here, I like it. 
so this really came. So if that's ever been you, get on the edge of your seat. I believe God's got some answers for us. I believe God, and, and, and this is real life stuff. This isn't, this isn't sound good stuff. This is stuff that I walked out, you walked out, others have walked out, and we can get into this, and we're going to find the truth today. Is ready, you ready to hear truth today? Yeah. You ready to hear freedom today? Yeah. Amen. Father, let's pray. Well, Father, we love you, we praise you, we honor and glorify you today. We welcome your presence. Holy Spirit, we know you're here in this place and online. God, you're not bound by walls. And so, Father, we just declare that now. And now, Father, I pray that your, your words would be, be shared, it would be heard, and, Father, we'll be changed by it. And we won't be the same because, God, you're not a God that leaves us the same. You're a God that improves, changes, and transforms. So God, we receive that today. We accept it today. We declare it today, and we thank you that it's, you've given us the authority to be able to use your words and your name, Jesus, for that very thing. So we worship you, we praise you today, in Jesus' name, amen, and amen. If you're, have you turned to Philippians chapter 4 yet? If you haven't, hold that spot and turn to Romans chapter 8. We're going to look there too. So you're going to be going back and forth. This whole thing kind of reminded me the other day. It was actually a a few weeks ago. I was uh, out of town. Michelle and I were out of town. Some of you know she's in school, uh, nursing school, and she has to go to Wausau a couple times a week uh, for classes. And so this particular day I was with with her, went with her, and do some shopping, kind of get some things done while she's in class. Anyway, as I, I'm, you know, driving down the road, I notice something really interesting. I, not- I can't help but notice this car that is kind of off in the distance. It, it's driving, but it's, it doesn't look fantastic. In fact, uh, it's probably, the reason I noticed it, because I think it was probably one of the ugliest cars I've ever seen. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't just ugly. It was like ugly on top of ugly kind of ugly. It was that ugly. And not only was it ugly, but if you looked at the sides of it, both sides had these like rips and tears. Like, I don't know, like some werewolf couldn't wear, you know, along the side of the thing. It was crazy. And, and, and not only that, but it was duct taped together. You know, the bumper was wired together. It was, uh, so if that's your car, I'm sorry that I'm talking about your car. <laughs> We're going to pray for a new one for you. But, but I noticed this car, and as I noticed the car, I couldn't even, I couldn't even get an understanding. It was so rusty, and it was, it, I couldn't tell what the original color was. In fact, not only was it rusty, but it was obvious that someone went to Walmart and got about four cans of spray paint and tried to make this the nicest car they could make. It was messy. It was runny. I mean, it wasn't like they even did a great, it was like, you know, you know it was not Awesome. The funny thing about the whole thing was at the very back on the bumper, there was a sticker. And on the sticker it said, I kid you not, it said, uh, wait, I I wrote it down because I was like, this is the best. It says, this is not an abandoned car. Don't tow me. (laughs) I was like, that was a good idea to put that, because if you would have seen it sitting in the parking lot, if I would have seen it out here, I'd be like, oh, you know, PD, let's get this thing. <laughs> How many times in our life do we feel as junked up as that car? How many times in our life will we walk through life and we feel like, Ugly upon ugly. I'm so excited. I'm so thankful that God slaps a bumper sticker that says, I don't abandon you. In John chapter 10, verse 10, he says, in fact, he says, I've come to bring life and to bring it more abundantly. He says, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. In Romans chapter 8, verse 35, Paul says it this way. He says, shall, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, hardship, persecution, 
famine, nakedness, danger, sword. And verse 37 says, no. And these things we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. I, I could read it this way. Trouble or hardship or feeling junky or rusty, duct tape together, separate us from? No. Why? Because God doesn't look at the outside. He looks at the heart. And if you've received Christ, he slaps a bumper sticker that says you are a new creation in Christ. The old is gone. The junker, you may feel like a junker, but on the inside, you are a Cadillac. Or whatever the great car is now, I don't know. This is the heart of this series. God has declared over you that you are an overcomer. Not because we're perfect. Not because we don't have issues or tragedies or challenges. Sicknesses and diseases and things that try to affect us. It's not in those things that we're not, we, we may feel junk, we may look like junk, we may do, but God doesn't see us that way. God sees us as beautifully and wonderfully made. And he's so much so that he reminds us that you are more than a conqueror, that you are an overcomer. You are victorious because of God in you. And even when the circumstances doesn't look like a victory, Look at that circumstance and say, no, you got to shut your mouth because God says I'm victorious. And when you still don't see it change, you still speak to it. And when it still doesn't change, guess what? You still speak to it. And you keep driving along that little junker and pretty soon it's going to start. You're like, oh man, I got this. Nothing separates us. You know, as an overcomer, I just want you to understand, remind you, that as an overcomer, there's a, there's, there's a connotation that if God calls us an overcomer, the very definition of an overcomer is someone who prevails. So I want you to understand this for a moment so you don't lose track or you don't get blindsided. When he calls us an overcomer, he's reminding us that though we'll face challenge and issue, you're an overcomer. And I want to remind you that we will face these things. That's why he, there's no sense to be an overcomer if there's never anything to overcome. You, you get me? But God prepares us, pre-prepares us, and says you're an overcomer. Even before you face a storm, even before, when the moment you receive Christ, he says, overcomer, yeah. overcomer, overcomer. Wait, wait, I haven't done anything. You're an overcomer because you're my kid. So we understand Jesus himself says, we're going to face persecution. But we're an overcomer. You are prevail prevailers, if you will. So let's look at Philippians chapter 4. We're going to read it. should be on the screen, but look in your Bibles. Mark it up. If you haven't marked it yet, mark it. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. Paul's writing here. Verse 4, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again, rejoice. Now, if I was getting back to my... Pentecostal roots, I'd say, say it again. Rejoice. 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 <laughs> I told you it's been a few weeks. I got a crowd, so I ham it up a little. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. Do you know gentleness is the word is, is actually moderation. It's really your character. This is really what it means. It means let your, let your character be evident to all. What's the character that's evident to all? Well, how are we living? 
Paul reminds us we've got to keep check. He says the Lord is near. So that's double. The Lord is near, so we're able to keep ourselves in check because he's with us, he doesn't leave us. But also, second side of that is he's near us, we better keep ourselves in check. You hear me today? The Lord is near. Verse 6, do not, somebody say do not. Be anxious about anything, but in every situation. How many situations? Every situation by prayer and petition. One translation says uh, 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 supplication. Thank you. By prayer and petition or supplication. With thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And then, this uh, this is called, in the Greek, this is called a henna. It's what it is, is a phrase that says, with this equals this, okay? And so when you see this, this ties it together. It says, if, you, if, you do, if I hit the switch on the light, the light comes on. This is the kind of mindset. It's, it's called a henna, okay? He says, so this, he says, so present your request with thanksgiving. Present your request to God, and the peace of God, transcend that, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Not in your good, not in your car, not in your finances. It doesn't do any of that. It's in Christ Jesus, which, by the way, he's perfect. Remember, and so the perfect one is guarding our hearts and our minds. The perfect one. Finally, brothers, sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think on such things. If anything is praiseworthy. How many of you know there's something to be praised about, praising about? May not be the car. May not be the finances. May not be what we see in the face or taste in the flesh. But the thing that's constant truth and never ending is that God loved you so much that Jesus came, lived and died for you. That's praiseworthy. Because I wasn't worthy of it and he made me worthy even though I wasn't worthy. That's something to be praised about. So you're like, Pastor, I don't know. There's some hard stuff. You're right. Jesus dealt with some hard stuff and he gave you praise. He gave you an opportunity to praise by saying, I'm going to give my life so that you can have life more abundantly. He said, you are an overcomer. In these verses, I'm I'm going to describe four ways. Four ways not to be an overcomer because I believe that we've already, we are overcomers the moment we receive Christ. I'm not trying you to convince you to be an overcomer. All that I want to show you through scripture here is some evidence, some keys, some opportunities to live that truth day by day. Something that you can stand on, something that you can walk in life. When it doesn't feel like it's going on, you can say, no, I'm an overcomer. And I think Paul gives us some real keys, some things of how we can walk that truth out. You ready for it? Four, Four ways to live as an overcomer. Number one, the first one, if you have your hand out, it's really to, to direct your, your heart, your delight. But this is what I want to say. I, I forgot to mention this. I wrote this not grammarly correct, grammatically correct. <laughs> Can't even. <laughs> you just scream. It's okay. No, I don't have Tourette's. Sorry. All kinds of things go in my head. I, I set this up. Purposely, I knew it wasn't real words, but I needed us to understand that we need to do it as a declaration. We need to decide that we are these things, that we are doing these things, not that we're trying to get these things, that we are, in fact, getting this. So the first one is direct your light to the Lord. It's, I am a rejoicer. Paul said, rejoice in the Lord sometimes. Rejoice in the Lord always. But pastor, there's not always, you're right, there isn't. But he didn't give us that. He's like, oh, you know, you're right. When everything's good, go ahead. Now he says, 
Rejoice in the Lord always. And I know it doesn't seem fair, and it certainly doesn't feel like the thing we want to do in the, in the time, but that is how the enemy works. He's not going to remind us of the truth. He's going to get us as far away, push us as far away from the truth so that we're bound and so we can't see truth. And so when you're like, oh, I don't feel it, that's the enemy trying to steal the truth, the word of God from you. Don't let him do it. He doesn't have power over you except for what we give him power to do. And so he says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice with every pain, with every, you're like, oh, that hurts. Hallelujah. Not for the pain, but for the promise. I have a text message on my bank account. I have it set to a certain amount. When it gets a little low, I get this bling, bling. Rejoice! <laughs> Rejoice! Not for the lack, but that, hey, I got a house. I got, I got clothes. I've got shoes. I've got breath. God's my source. I'll never have enough. But if I have him, I, he's always enough. Because he's the source. Now, now he gives us some, some things he, to help tap into that truth, right? Tithes, offerings, giving, and, and not just monetarily, giving and serving and, and doing. There's all these, these things that we can, it's planting seed, right? God's a God of, you know, he's, he, he makes sense, he's amazing, he's a miracle, but he, he, he gives us these opportunities, he says, hey, if you plant, it'll grow. It's in that same mindset, if you rejoice, if you rejoice, it grows. I saw uh, a meme, I don't know what that is. Social, on social media, they have these pictures with words. And the, and the meme was that every time you praise, the circumstance gets smaller and the vastness of this life gets bigger. Like the, 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 the creation of God gets bigger. And it showed this, it showed the, the universe and then it showed praise and it, it showed the, the, the Milky Way gets bigger. And then it should praise and it shows everything gets bigger. It was like, oh. Okay. Now I want to remind you, this isn't, a, this isn't a natural thing. This only happens through Christ. This is only available because of the supernatural that lives on the inside of us. That God enables our normal to be supernatural. Our natural to be supernatural. It's all in God. So don't forget... That truth, Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. How do we do this? How do I do this, Pastor? H how do I do this, Jason? How do I do this? By thinking on the things that Jesus did. Paul wrote this in prison. And at this time, when he wrote this, most theologians believe that he was in prison for four years while he's writing this. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say it, rejoice. In fact, in this letter, Philippians, short letter, Paul actually says this seven times. You know, seven is the, the number of completion. There's, there's something constant about give and complete rejoice to the Father. He's called you an overcomer. Now he wants you to live out that overcomer by rejoicing. Not for the problem, not for the pain, but because of the promise. Rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. So we can't always 
rejoice about finances. We need to get, we need to get much more eternally minded here. Now, I, I understand. I live life like you, too. It's not like we don't face these things. We don't look at these things. And I know they seem extra real. But the Bible says, and Paul said, right, nothing separates us. That means that God is constant. He's always there. So as real as the circumstance we're facing is God right in our lives. And so in order for us to change our mind, we need to begin to rejoice. We need to go to the Father, speak to the Father as if he's there. Just so you know, he is. Right? He is there. The story that I, I came across. I was a professor in taught literature at Yale. Late 1800s, early 1900s. One year, his name was Dr. Phelps. One year, he was grading some tests shortly before Christmas, and he saw a note that a student had written on a tough question on a test. The student said, only God knows the answer to this question. Merry Christmas. I was like, did he read my paper? No. <laughs> Professor returned the test with his own note under the student's comment. And he wrote, God gets an A, you get an F. Happy New Year. <laughs> Why I like that statement is, guess what? Sometimes we're going to get Fs, but God always gets an A. Amen. And understand that the truth of it is, is that you get an A because of God in us. We're not on loan. We're not doing this ourselves. We're a new creation. It's not us. It's God in us. And so when you feel like an F, God says you're an A. Someone needs to hear that today. When you feel like a fail, God says you are amazing. In fact, you're an overcomer, a more than a conqueror. Best way to overcome, to live it out, is to be a rejoicer. Number two. We could be a rejoicer, but we also need to take our troubles to the Lord. So I declare this, I am a prayer. I'm a prayer. I'm a prayer. Paul said, be anxious for nothing but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Let your request be known to God. And the peace of God. The peace of God. God, this isn't a peaceful time or situation. But you, your very name is peace. The peace of God. Which surpasses understanding. This is reference to Proverbs chapter 1 verse 3 to 5, right? Trust in the Lord. With all your heart, lean not on your own understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge him. He'll keep your path straight. So which surpasses all understanding. It doesn't make sense. It's never going to make sense. It's never going to make sense in the natural. Let me say that. It's never going to make sense. And people are going to think you're crazy. They're going to think you lost it. But praise God, you're going to get through it. And they're going to see it. And they're going to say, I need what you, you got. It's going to be a testimony. We may look like an outcast at first, but our being an outcast actually sends a cast to bring the fish in. Do you see that? How God's going to take this thing that he didn't, God doesn't want, God doesn't sit on his throne, okay, now I'm going to really get them. So then they'll honor me. No, he doesn't do that. But he does take those things when we face it. And he says, uh-uh. This is not going to take my kids out. They're overcomers. 
And in fact, if they'll call on me, if they'll be a rejoicer, if they'll be a prayer, I'm going to forge them so strong like iron that nothing's going to break them. Be anxious for nothing and everything, and everything, prayer and supplication. Let thanksgiving and your request be known, made known to God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I shared this in, in pre-service prayer. And when it says guard your minds, uh, the old or the New Testament is primarily has there's there's two themes that typically is spoken in the New Testament, especially the writings of Paul and some of the other writers is either sporting events type things or military terms. Okay? You gotta remember this is in Rome. It was all about the you know the 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 conquests, whether they were in battle or if they were this is where the Olympics came from. Okay? So it's the mindset is is that way. It's it's so this this truth is if if you look through and you kind of study the Greek, it's saying, again, it's one of those hint of things. If this happens, this happens. And it says that when you, when you begin to make your requests known, when you not only make them known, but when you do it with thanksgiving, I, I think there's a really important part there with thanksgiving. It, it's in there. It must, there must be more to it than just pray and petition. There must be some thanksgiving that's going on. There must be some faith happening, some stepping out a little bit. It says if we do these things, you let your request be known to God, it says the peace of God, which you're not even going to understand or how see how it goes, will guard your hearts and minds. This is a military term that says that God basically will send his guarding angels to stand over and guard your heart and mind. Now, remember, Paul, when he was, Paul and Silas, when they were thrown into prison, they, there was a guard that was to take watch over them. They take guard over them. Remember that? So they threw him in the inner cell, and then they placed a guard. That's exactly what they're talking about here. It says when we pray, when we give petition, when we give supplication, when we do it with thanksgiving, God, though, sends his ministering angel, that buff angel, not those wimpy little angels. Some of those guardian Gabriel was a fighter. Come on. And, and, and he was mighty. And if we really got an idea with the angel, they'd be like, "Woo, that thing is, I'm not messing with that. That's strong that's the arm of god that's the strength of god it says that he will guard your hearts and minds but you got to do something you got to activate him you got to let him i know god's all knowing i know god's all but he's he's given us this free will to say if you will give me you i will give you all of me and everything i have and so if you give me my your prayer so we're prayers we're rejoicers And it says, now I want you to, when you begin to pray, I want you to begin to expect, I want you to begin to see, when you begin to pray, when you begin to praise, that God just said, all right, legion of angels, you go guard that heart and that mind. Kick that devil in the teeth while you're at it, would you? God's not a wimp. He's strong and he's mighty. And so are you. Because you're an overcomer. God called you that. He named you that. He labeled you that. It's in your very DNA. But I know that there are people, let's just say it this way, there are people that are artists on the inside, but they never put their hand to paint. They've never sang. They've never used that gift. And so even though they have been gifted that thing, that talent, they haven't used it. It's in that same way God has gifted us, given us this fact that we are an overcomer. And he's like, I want you to use it. And it's simple how he says to use it. It's not by works. It's not by deeds. It's not by doing. It's simply by praising the Father and praying to the Father. I think here we see, I, we got to close, but six ways to pray. Just very quickly, it's on your hand, it's already written out. We see this in, in this passage of scripture between six and seven. Paul said, pray confidently, be anxious for nothing. Be confident in your prayer. Don't be anxious. Oh, don't pray that way. Pray confidently. Our confidence is in the one that we're praying to. 
That's where we get confident. Don't be anxious like, oh, man, I hope God hears me. Of course he hears you. He's your kids. I drop anything at any moment when my kids give me a call. Especially more, even more so now that they're far away. I'm like, I'm sorry. I'll be in a meeting. I, I got I to gotta take this for a second. How much more is God? Oh, I don't want to bother him. He's running the whole world. No, he's like, I'm going to take this. Can you guys just hold for a minute? I'm going to take this. My kid's calling. That's how important he says, pray confidently. We can be, pray consistently. He says, pray in everything. Pray for the little things and the big things. Pray constantly. Consistently, rather. Like, oh, I... I've done this so many times. I'm not going to pray for that. I'm not going to bother him with that. When we get to here, I'm, I'm going to. Pray consistently. Pray earnestly. Both prayer and supplication. The word prayer there, it, it actually means asking, but this word is not really just describing that. It's actually, it includes, it's a dimension of worship. It's an honor. It's, it's, it's all of those things. It's, it's asking and it's worshiping, and it's honor, it's reverence, it's bringing reverence, so it's a big word, and then, and then supplication or petition, um, this is awesome, this word, when, you, when it says this, it means a binding to, so, so what it's saying is that when you begin to pray, and, and you begin to supplicate, or you begin to give your petition, what you're doing is you're binding yourself to the Father, you, you're saying you, you're bound on earth as it is in heaven. You're binding yourself, right? Now, the enemy will try to bind us too. See, that's a counterfeit. God's the creator of the binding for your profit, for your good, because you're an overcomer. So when we supplicate, when we, when we petition, we are binding ourselves strength arm to arm Maybe you're not weak, or maybe you're not strong. Maybe you feel weak, but we know he's strong. So we need to bind our arms, to, we need to lock arms with the Father. Amen? And that's really what that's meaning. You see that picture, locking on with God. Now you can say, my daddy's bigger than your daddy. My daddy can beat up your daddy. Pray thankfully. Paul says it this way, with thanksgiving, thankfully. Find the thanks in everything that God has given. Find the thanksgiving, find it. Pray simply. It says, let your requests be known to God. We don't have to use fancy language. Speak to him the way you would speak to him. I, have you heard the acronym KISS? I'm going to change this a little bit. The kiss me means, you ready? Are you ready? Kiss, kiss means to keep it simple, silly. <laughs> I grew up in a house where stupid was a bad word, so I'm still stuck in me. Keep it simple, silly. He doesn't need these and thous. He just wants you. That's why relationship is that. We're going to receive our communion. And, and this is what exactly what God has given. Keep it simple. The simple is this. If we will receive Christ... If we'll go to the Father, he promises this things. He says, well, remembrance of me and remembrance in the death, it's the, what he paid for that we get to remember. So, Miss Deb, if you come forward, grab. Hallelujah. I ask you just to bow your heads. I don't want to leave church today. I don't want to leave broadcast without the opportunity. I don't want to assume that everyone 
has received Jesus in their life. So at this moment, in this time, I promise you that God is waiting. If you will say yes, he will come in and he will change your life. The Bible says there's only one way to the Father. There's only one way for relationship. And it comes exclusively through Jesus. It says if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that you will be a new creation. You will become from a, just a natural man to something supernatural will be done on the inside of you. I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer with me today. We'll do it as a body. But if this is your first time, please let me know. I want to pray with you. I want to welcome you. Because after we're done with this prayer, a miracle will happen. Your life will change. God will be on the inside. You will be a new creation. Pray this with me. Father God, we thank you for sending Jesus to pay for our sin. We didn't deserve it, but he did it. And we're thankful. Forgive me now of my sin. I receive you, Jesus. I receive my overcoming label right now. In Jesus' name, come into my life. I receive you right now. In Jesus' name. Just wait because I'm kind of listening to the angels cheer. The heavens, the, the choir in heaven is yelling, yeah! You're a new creation. You're an overcomer. The moment you receive him, now don't let the enemy steal that truth. This week, You'll notice that I said there were four things. We only got the two. We got to come back. But these two are powerful. Be a prayer. Be a rejoicer. And watch God be God in your life. Amen? I'm going to just pray a blessing over you. I do want to remind you, thank you for being a giver giving your tithes and offerings. I'm going to forego our confession because I've kept you too long. But I want to, I, I just, I confess over you, God, your source. Every avenue that the enemy's trying to block, we, we, we just, God, Holy Spirit unclogs that. He's your source. The moment you give, it's like you're putting a little rotor rooter right into that pipeline of the presence of God in your life. Accept it, receive it. And even if you don't see it, rejoice. Be a rejoicer, be a prayer. Amen? Father, I pray over the tithes and the offerings today. Father, whether they give in person in our boxes or give online or text or email, however they give. Father, I just pray a blessing over them. I thank you that, Father, I just agree with what you said. Father, that you, you, will, you will allow it to grow and increase. It's your heart, your desire that every need is met according to your riches. Father, you got a lot of riches. So we just put it in your hands. We thank you for it. We love and we praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody said amen. Amen. So long, eCampus. We love you. Thank you for being here. You are a blessing. We'll see you next week in Jesus' name.